Hey there everybody, time for more electrostatics fun. In this video we're discussing the idea of electric potential. Now notice I didn't say electric potential energy, electric potential is a new term that's related to energy but it's kind of its own quantity. So new definition, we define the term electric potential to be the electric potential energy per unit charge. So the electric potential is simply defined as electric potential energy over the charge that you put at that potential or at that um, particular spot. And so the symbol we get for this new quantity is a capital V, and we're going to see why here in just a few minutes. And so we can write a new relationship like that. We define the electric potential to be the electrical energy per unit charge. So for example, Suppose we had some random big charge Q, and then we had some random small charge uh, little Q. And we might refer to this little charge as a test charge. If we know what the energy of that charge is, so the energy of that small charge is 12 joules, then the potential at that location will be 12 joules over 4 coulombs, which would be 3 joules per coulomb. So what that means is that that big charge creates an electric potential at that spot whose magnitude is 3 joules per coulomb. We're going to give a joule per coulomb a new name. We're going to call it a volt, named after an Italian feller named Alessandra Volta. Um, and Mr. Volta basically developed the first crude battery. So that's why the unit for electric potential is called the volt. And the symbol for a volt is also a capital V. So something to be careful about, the symbol for electric potential and the unit that we measure electric potential in are the same. They're both a capital V. So just be careful of that and be aware of that. Because electric potential is measured in volts, it's often referred to as voltage. It's a bad habit we Americans have of naming quantities after their units. We do the same thing with distance traveled. Often we refer to it as mileage. And so when you hear the term voltage, really what you're talking about is electric potential. Just be careful with the terms and the symbols there. So if we have a point charge that's isolated, such as this right here, and we again refer to that as a small test charge, then the voltage at that location is the energy of that test charge over the magnitude of the test charge. And so remember that electric potential energy is given by K, Q1, Q2 over R. And so if we just substitute that into the electric potential equation, then those little Q's cancel out and so the electric potential created by that big charge Q would be equal to KQ over R, where your distance R is that distance right there. So what this does, it gives us a way to describe the um, energy at this particular point without actually having a charge at that particular point. It's useful because it does not depend on what we actually put there. It's the same for any charge we put there. Um, so again, the electric potential does not depend on that actual test charge, little q, but it only depends on the charge which created the electric field. So it only depends on the big charge, q. Remember that those test charges are always positive. And so if we have a positive charge that creates an electric field, then it's going to have a positive voltage near it. And if we have a negative charge creating the electric field, then we'll have a negative voltage nearby. And so it's important that we remember that when we use equations like this one, oops, meant to say this one, that we actually plug in the sign of the charge when we plug in values for Q. 
make sure you actually plug in the signs so that you get the correct sign for the voltage. Remember what's really important when we do energy is not so much how much energy something has, but rather it's change in energy. And the same thing is true of voltage. What's really important is the change in electric potential because that's the only thing that we can actually measure. The instrument we would use to measure change in electric potential is a voltmeter. And voltmeters are something that are actually pretty cheap. And you would find them in uh, most electronics kits. If you're, for example, somebody who repairs electrical equipment, chances are you're going to use a voltmeter a lot of the time. Very, very common because they're relatively cheap. So the electric potential difference between two points, which is the important quantity, is equal to the change in the electric potential energy of that charge over the test charge Q. And so basically just take that equation, put a delta in front of the uh, electric potential and a delta in front of the electric potential energy. And then because the electric potential is often the thing we measure and the energy is something that we calculate from it, we often rewrite it like that. So let's kind of work through a few examples. So suppose we have a 4 coulomb charge that is fixed in place. So that thing is going to create a big electric field around it. And we have points P and R, which are 1 meter and 3 meter from the charge, respectively. Now it doesn't matter where I draw those two points. All that matters is how far away they are from the charge. Question is, what's the change in potential, keyword change, if we move from point R to point P. So if I just calculate the electric potential at both of those points, at point P, the electric potential would be this ginormous number, 3.6 times 10 to the 10th. The meter squared would cancel out with the meter on bottom. And then one of the coulombs squared would cancel out with the coulomb behind the four leaving me with newtons per coulomb and remember, excuse me, newton times meter per coulomb and then remember that a newton times a meter is a joule so 3.6 times 10 to the tenth joules per coulomb or you can write that as volts do the same thing down here find the voltage at point R and so that electric potential will be 1.2 times 10 to the tenth volts so because it's farther away the electric potential is smaller. And so to find the difference, so that you don't get your signs mixed up, you might write it like this, indicating moving from R to P. So final minus initial would look like that. And so I would subtract 3.6 minus 1.2 times 10 to the 10th volts. And so delta V moving from R to P would be 2.4 times 10 to the 10th volts. And it would make sense that we get a positive number because as we go from R to P, we are going to be gaining energy. And so it makes sense that the electric potential would increase as well. So here's the next thing we want to do with this. Suppose we took the same setup and we wanted to move an electron from point R to point P. We already know that the voltage change moving from R to P is positive 2.4 times 10 to the 10th volts. That's going to be the same regardless of what thing we actually move from R to P. We also know that work is equal to change in energy. So in this case, change in electrical energy which is equal to Q delta V. And so I know that the charge on an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then we've got our delta V. And I'm going to write it as joules per coulomb. And so when I do the arithmetic, the coulombs cancel out, leaving me with a unit of joules. Now notice that the work is negative because the charge Q is negative. When we do energy equations, plug in that negative sign, 
into the equation so that you get the correct sign for your answer. And so since the word came out negative, that means that an electron would move on its own from R to P, if you were guiding it correctly. Um, you would just have to do work in slowing it down. If it was free to move from R to P, it would get to point P and then it would be going really fast. So to just move it from R to P and then have it stay at rest at point P, you would have to do work in slowing it down. Kind of like lowering something off of a shelf. You could just let it fall to the ground, or you can carefully push on it and slow it down as you bring it down. Same idea here. Now the cool thing about this is that the path the electron takes doesn't really matter. It does not affect the amount of work needed. All that's really going to um, be important as far as finding the work needed is where it started and where it ended. The actual path doesn't matter. So if I draw a couple of different paths, just random paths from R to P, the work is going to be the same regardless of which path we actually choose. Now when I say work, I mean the network. You may have to like push it one way, but then you would get that work back as it pushes on you um, going the opposite direction. And so the big idea here is that because the path doesn't matter, electric fields are conservative meaning if there's no outside um, forces on an object in an electric field, its energy will be conserved, which is an important thing to remember. Let's look at a second example. If you um, ever had one of the old tube-style TVs, like not a nice flat screen, but the older kind that were real wide, um, those are referred to as CRT, or cathode ray tubes. Um, the way that those things work is basically you shoot electrons at the screen from behind and then when the electrons hit the screen it causes the screen to glow a certain color and then if you do that enough you can get an image out of that. So what happens is we accelerate electrons through a potential difference and I just kind of made this number up of about 10,000 volts. The question is how fast is that electron going when you accelerate it from rest through that potential difference. So typically the way that you actually do this is you take two plates, um, conductor plates like made out of metal, and then you put a tiny hole in one of them. So I'm drawing this as a cross section, so that's just a hole in an otherwise uniform plate. And then you attach it to a battery. Remember that the big end of the battery is the positive end, and the other end would be negative. And so if we kind of write it out like this, if we assume that that end is zero volts, then that would mean that the other end would be like negative 10,000 volts. We could also think about it as being something like where the positive plate is plus 5,000 volts and the negative plate is minus 5,000 volts. Regardless, the potential difference going from here to here has to be 10,000 volts. doesn't matter what the actual potentials are. What's important is the change. So I'm going to kind of back that up a little bit. And now that my buttons are working correctly, um, here is the electron. And then it's going to go through that hole. And we want to know what is the velocity of the electron after it goes through that hole. Well, we can use energy to figure this out. We know that the energy lost in going through the electric field will be equal to the kinetic energy gained. We also know that the change in potential energy is equal to Q delta V. And so we could write something like that. We could also kind of sort of draw a LOL chart where the system consists of our electron and the electric field created by the um, charged plates. And so we go from a lot of potential energy right here to a bunch of kinetic energy right there. 
the potential energy here is positive. Actually, I drew that backwards. Let me change that real quick. The potential energy would be negative. Actually, scratch all of that. The electric potential energy is actually positive right here because our negative charge is near other negative charge. Um, and so the signs would be the same, so our electric potential energy would be positive. Um, doubted myself there for a second, but turned out I had it right to begin with. Sorry for my confusion. But moving on. So we can take the um, change of potential energy. So that's this term. Set it equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is K final minus K initial. Initial kinetic energy is zero, which is nice. And so we set that equal to one half mv squared and then solve that for v. So multiply both sides by two, divide by m, and then lastly take the square root of both sides. And so our expression for v would be negative two q delta v over m square rooted. So there's our expression again. Now we know a couple of things. We know what the voltage is. Next question is what is the charge and the mass? Well, if we go to our um, handy dandy formula chart, the charge on an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The mass of an electron is also on there. Mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Smallest thing that we uh, might be asked to ever deal with be an electron. And again, those two things come from your formula chart. Just need to be able to look them up when we need to. And so substituting in the numbers, there's our charge. Don't forget, plug in the sign with the charge over the mass. And then don't forget about the square root sign. And so just kind of doing the top part. So just rewrite that the uh, magnitude of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 10,000 gives you 1.6 times 10 to the negative 15. A negative times a negative gives you a positive. And then the coulombs would cancel out. Remembering that a joule is a newton times a meter, and that a newton is a kilogram times meter per second squared, the unit on top looks like that meaning that the kilograms cancel out, leaving our final unit meter squared per second squared. And so dividing those two numbers, and then taking the square root, we'd get something like 4.2 times 10 to the seventh meters per second, which is pretty fast. Remember that the speed limit of the universe is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So if you ever get a number bigger than that, then something has gone wrong. Okay, so I think we've stumbled our way through enough um, electric potential. Remember a couple of things. The definition of potential is energy over charge. And when we define that, we assume that that test charge is positive. Secondly, remember that a volt is a joule per coulomb. That will help you understand the units. Third, remember that we can relate work to change in energy, which means we can relate work to change in voltage. Fourth, remember to use the signs for the charge when you substitute them into equations for energy and electric potential. And lastly and most important, always remember to smile. So that's the end of this lesson. I think we've done enough. Um, we will obviously uh, do a little bit of practice and put this into context during class next time. Um, so be prepared for that. And y'all, have a great day.